Looks like we're pretty well sealed in here. Unless... Unless what? Unless you can fit through that hole. I... I think I could squeeze through there. I'll drop down and try to free you guys from the outside. If there's any trouble, I'll call with this walkie-talkie. You might be able to help me with these sawmill controls. While you guys do that, I'll try prying open that steel door. Given enough time, I might be able to make some progress. Sounds like a plan. Good luck, Bentley. And remember to shout if I can help you from up here. Bentley, you okay? I can't see you from in here, but I heard the fall. I'll be fine. Just give me a moment to catch my... breath. Well now, Candy Bridges. I should have figured a puny turtle like you'd find a rat hole to squirm through. Well, I... Just dropped my glasses, had to come pick them up. I ain't like you, boy. I ain't stupid. When y'all were unconscious, me and my boys paid a visit to your hideout and found all them clockwork parts. Lucky thing, too. Arpeggio is willing to plunk down a king's ransom for the whole lot. I even threw in the talons. You sold all the clockwork parts? Arpeggio has them all? I wouldn't expect one of your kind to understand the finer points of commerce. You turtles are too stupid to know a woodcutter from a woodchuck. That's it! Time I showed you just how stupid we turtles really are. Sly, on my command! I hear ya. Prepare yourself, Bissad! On guard! Okay, Walnut. Get ready for a smushing. Come on in here, boys. Let's get this varmint. Take that, puny little turtle. Come out, boys. Let's get to killing. Tarnation. I've been done in by some four-eyed turtle. Times have changed. Once again, brains triumph over brawn. Good job, little buddy. That was some fast thinking. Don't forget about me! You... did a great job opening that door, Murray. Thanks! Uh, attention, uh, John Besson! Arpeggio's, uh, carrier blimp will uh, arrive to pick up the Northern Light battery in exactly one minute. Okay, enough patting ourselves on the back. If we're going to get the clockwork parts back, we need to get onto that blimp. The silo battery isn't far. If we run, we can make it. Enough talk, let's move! As we shut ourselves into the Northern Light Battery, it became black. For a few long minutes, we just sat there in darkness. No one dared to talk for fear that John Bassan's men might discover where we were hiding. Time seemed to have stopped. And then, we felt it. We were being lifted up to Arpeggio's blimp. It was all so strange. The focus of all our schemes had been stolen from us. Our clockwork parts were gone. Looking around the inside of the battery, I knew we all felt it. Failure. I was twitchy and ready for action. Any action. Bentley tried to make some sense of the situation by drawing up meaningless plans. But Murray? Murray took it the worst. He just sat there sobbing while the team van floated away over the horizon. That van was his life. I knew I'd have to find a way to make it up to him. instruments have picked up large magnetic fields radiating from inside that blimp. 
If Arpeggio's already started reassembling clockwork, that's where you'll find him. Sounds good. I'm on my way. Don't waste any time here, Sly. Get to the blimp and take some recon photos. To build a plan, we need to know how close they are to reviving clockwork. Relax, Bentley. I've got it under control. I, I had no idea they could reassemble clockwork so fast! Calm down, Bentley. He might be in one piece, but he doesn't appear to be, you know, alive. Let's stick to the format here. How about some recon photos? You're right. We need to be informed to create a plan of action. Try to get a shot of Clockwork's head, a mech egg, and one of those spinning magnetic inducers. They seem important to the procedure, but stay away from the guards. If you get detected, we won't have time for a second chance. I don't need to study those photos to see the writing on the wall. Clearly, Neela and Arpeggio have conspired together to rebuild clockwork. And it looks like they're dangerously close to realizing their goal. Look, Bentley, I know it's not your style, but I need a quick plan of attack. Try to think of a way, any way, to stop clockwork from getting reassembled. Well... Those magnetic inducers seem to be holding the parts together. If you reverse their polarity, it should pull clockwork apart. Unfortunately, the inducer speed control station is locked down tight. Pickpocket keys for the four patrolling guards to get at it. Then you'll need to manually reverse the polarity of each inducer deck at the top of their rotation. Consider it done. What's all this then? The magnets have been reversed! But... By Jove! It seems to have locked the clockwork parts into place! Excellent! Sly Cooper! Of course this would be your doing! Ah, Mr. Cooper! No doubt you believed a reversal would pull the old bird apart, eh? <laughs> but it seems to have had quite the opposite effect. I'm truly grateful. When fully powered up, I'll join myself to its circuit and be born anew! All this because you can't fly. You're pathetic. Immortality! Immortality is what I seek. The other Claw Gang members were much too short-sighted. They were satisfied using the clockwork parts to drive their various trivial schemes. But not me. No. I saw them for what they really were. The keys to life eternal. So, what? You had Neela put me on the scent back in Cairo, and then waited while I stole the parts from the other Claw Gang members, all the while not arousing any suspicion that you were behind it all? You make it sound easy, Koopa. I had to carry your pathetic gang through that first set of heists. I was overjoyed when Arpeggio let me toss you in jail. I could finally go after the parts myself. Ah! But acquiring all the parts was only half the equation. Think, Cooper. What kept Clockwork alive for thousands of years? He was fueled by his hatred for my family. Splendid! That's right! Hatred! Putting his gears and wires together was child's play compared with accumulating that much hatred. You can't make people hate. Oh, my poor naive boy. My meticulous mind has found a way. As your hippopotamus friend will attest, spice consumption makes you both angry and susceptible to hypnosis. The Contessa, hypnotist extraordinaire, devised a way to command people through the use of flashing lights. I've created this blimp to be a massive transmitter of those precise light frequencies. The only problem I faced was finding a suitable source of light waves. The Northern Lights! You've been collecting Northern Light energy so you could hypnotize everyone beneath the blimp. Ah, hypnotize those who'd eaten food covered in illegal spice. Thank goodness for Dimitri. Through his nightclub, he got the whole city to consume the spice. 
You're going to Paris to unleash a hypnotic light show of hate. That's outlandishly cruel. Cruel, perhaps, but necessary to give clockwork the spark of immortality. Ah, well, my new body awaits me. Be a dear, Mila, and keep him covered. Ta-ta! Stupid arpeggio. I double-crossed the Koopa guy, Interpol, and Carmelita. What made you think I wouldn't do the same to you? This is preposterous! You're my protégé, not the next candidate for my immortality. I demand you exit the clockwork frame or... or... Oh, things are looking grim. Mila has joined herself to the clockwork frame and the union has produced Clockla. She's out and free to terrorize the world. This blimp is still in motion to Paris. I can only assume Arpeggio's autopilot will activate the hate hypnosis light show. If that happens, there will be no stopping Clockla. She'll be immortal. But we still have a chance. In her new form, she'll need to draw a lot of energy from this blimp's engines to stay strong. If we can disable the engines, that should be enough to weaken her to a state in which we can attack. Getting at these engines will require all three of us to work together in perfect harmony. We've pulled off some tough jobs in the past, but they were just the warm-up round for what we'll be going through tonight. Locked down tight. Since we can't get in, I figure we'll have to destroy it from the outside. I hope you're carrying some heavy explosives, Bentley, because that engine isn't small. It just so happens that there's a ready supply of explosives already available on the blimp. Lock one of these TNT barrels up to that engine room to destroy it. Sounds easy enough. What's the catch? The initial payload in that TNT barrel won't be powerful enough to do the job. If you pick up three magnetic chargers, you should achieve the necessary blast force to destroy the engine. It's simple, really. Just get close to the chargers, and they'll automatically attach to your barrel. All right, let's blow stuff up. That should be the last time anyone puts that engine to use. 